Hello and welcome to What's New in Inventor 2013. Today's segment is around sketches. My name is Ken Phelps. I'm a tech support supervisor here at Master Graphics. One of the first things you'll see when you start up Inventor is the welcome screen. It's a whole new format to it. They're broken down into various categories for the new, the recent files, some changing your default configuration for your templates as well. You can change your default setting back to inches or millimeters and choose the very standard that you want to use when doing so. You have access to what's new information, the Autodesk Exchange, and other information here. When you make a new file, the various category types of parts and assemblies are broken down by that category type. So parts are together, assemblies are together, presentation files and so forth are all categorized together. So you're not hunting for the file type that you want to begin your drawing file from. So for sketching I'll make a new part file here. When you make your first sketch you'll see by default you're not in a sketch automatically. The default now is to enter without a sketch. So when you click to make a new sketch the origin planes will show up and you pick the plane that you want to begin your sketch on. One of the new tools inside of the sketching is just different ways to draw a rectangle. There's a three point, there's a two point center, and also a three point center. So you choose which command fits best for what you know about what you're trying to draw. In this case, I'm going to do a two point center rectangle. So I'll choose my center point, my origin here, and I'll make it, let's say, one inch wide and maybe a half inch tall. So I'll put my values in. looks good so I'll finish my sketch you'll see the fully constrained option also shows up as a little thumbtack icon in the browser as well so you don't have to go down and see it in the lower right corner of the screen there will be an image display if it's been fully constrained now something else that's new is a different way to dimension to arcs so I have my arc length drawing when to open up here I'm going to edit my sketch. And the arc I have in the bottom right here is missing a dimension to call it out. So when I'm applying my dimension, one of the options I have now is I can right click, go to my dimension type, and choose arc length. So I'll place that below, and I can modify its length by typing in whatever value I want to put in here. So I'll just put in 1.4 since I'm close to that now. And again, that's also fully constrained. A different technique for going through and making some edits to your sketches is just trimming. Now, a new function within the trim command allows you to just gesture the mouse over what you want to have trimmed away. In this case, I'm going to hold down my left mouse button and just start kind of scribing my line across whatever I want to have trimmed away. Just like you're kind of using the eraser for a pencil. You just kind of scrib scribble across what you want to have removed. So I'll do a little bit more cleanup here. Now in this case, I'm going to leave a couple pieces hanging out into my sketch. Now this in the past would have caused some challenges for trying to extrude this. It's not a fully defined, you know, watertight envelope to extrude. I'm going to click OK, finish my sketch. Now when I extrude this, I'm not going to have any challenges to go through because the area it wants to extrude does make a watertight you know, envelope to it. Also newer to the software too is the ability to do dimensioning or just measurements rather to the midpoints of, of edges inside here. So if I go from this endpoint say to the midpoint of this edge I can get that distance. So now we have the midpoint option for doing measurements. Thanks for watching. To be notified when new videos are available, subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button above to see a list of all our videos or to get more information, click on the link below to go to our website.